Yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak at this event. Um, I've been wanting to go to Indigo for a very long time. I'm out in California and having the digital event has really given me an opportunity to give a talk to you all. And I'm really excited to talk about the publishing evaluation. How do we look at games and sign games? And so this is a really important and, and hopefully educational talk for anyone who's talking to publishers and trying to understand whether they're a good fit for any publisher. So uh, hi, it's me, John Cooney. I work as the VP of Business Development at Armor Game Studios. Over the course of my career, I have evaluated thousands of titles uh, and have looked at games for anything from PC to console to VR to mobile to web and um, everything in between. And I started as an indie developer uh, you know, just over 15 years ago as I entered the game industry. So this talk is really about looking at the games through the lens of a publisher. A lot of developers are focused on developing a game and pitching the development of that game and what it means to be a developer. And I'm hoping that I can pair that with an understanding of how Armor Game Studios, a publisher, looks at games and how we look at things. Um, so we're going to do that in three parts. Uh, the first is we're going to talk about criteria, which is this magical filter that all publishers use to understand what is uh, what makes a game the game they want to sign or not. Uh, we're going to talk about the publishing evaluation process. How do we use that criteria to educate us and understand how we are going to evaluate and sign the title? And then finally, just some tips for engaging with the publisher. This isn't going to be just like a bunch of random tips. These are the tips that I think a lot of developers are missing and would benefit the most from utilizing and leveraging into their conversations with publishers. So, um, so let's unravel this. Let's really dive into all the pieces of a publishing evaluation, starting with uh, criteria, which is that magical filter I was talking about before. The reason we use criteria is really quite simple. Uh, in a perfect world, we would just sign every video game and we'd work on every single game that came to us. But uh, we don't have unlimited resources and people, so we have to make decisions on which games are the ones that are going to fit us the best and the ones that we can support uh, the best and make sure those developers are getting what they need. So at the end of the day, we have to pick just a handful of projects every year to sign and to support and to make sure that we can support those titles. So we use criteria to help us really filter out which of the games are the ones that feel the best and work the best for us as a publisher. So. Uh, Evaluation criteria are there to really inform us or tell us what isn't a right fit for each game and what is preferential for us as a publisher. It's really important to know that criteria are not set in stone. So us as a publisher being around for 10 years, the criteria we set at the beginning is nowhere close to what we have now. So what I would really be careful about and the first thing I would press upon a developer looking for a publisher is don't judge what you think our criteria is based on our current portfolio or what we just released. Because in reality, what we're looking to sign and what we're doing is often in the stretch of a year to three years or even longer as we're working on the game and developing it. The second thing is that it could be really hard to tell what a criteria of any publisher is. And that's a really hard and sometimes confusing thing for developers. Um, and it's even harder from the fact that some publishers don't like to tell you what their criteria is. They, they say things like, oh, we're pretty open to most pitches or um, yeah, we'll look at anything that gets sent to us. And in reality, you know, we know that every publisher is looking for specific things. Just as an example, I put together some of the criteria that we're currently using. This is just a subset of everything we look at as far as a publisher. But you know, I'll go through some of these. For example, we're looking for funding asks that are usually between zero and a quarter million dollars, but we're willing to evaluate games up to half a million dollars in development funding. Uh, we really like genres that are in, you know, in the in the midcore sort of tier of uh, genres, which could be anything from, you know, super interesting platformers to tower defense games to uh, life and social games, which can lean sometimes a little more casual. But generally, our footing is very much in the midcore of of genres and styles. And then we publish for PC, console, and mobile. We also are looking to publish for VR as well. Uh, that's not on here. And then um, we're typically looking for uh, teams that need full service publishing, meaning they need everything from localization to funding to uh, all the pieces in between. So uh, this is just an example of some of the criteria we use for understanding which games are fits and which are not. So it's really also important to know that criteria is imperfect because it's really hard to put every single game into perfect boxes that make it 
fit to a, a set of criteria. Often things move outside the criteria we establish, and that's actually important and good because it allows us to expand what we do as a publisher. It helps us uh, frame the game in terms of what's risky or not based on what we've already done and what we're looking for. And it's actually healthy for us to uh, step outside our comfort zone and to take on things that are challenging or different. So our criteria can't be too strict. We can't say we're not signing a game because it doesn't meet X, but we also need to be flexible enough that just so we're not signing the same game over and over and over again. So that's criteria. And using that criteria, we apply it to our evaluation process. So I'm going to actually expose our entire evaluation process at Armor Games and what we're doing there as far as taking a game from the first time we see it to signing a contract and working with that developer. It's really important to caveat, again, that every publisher has a different evaluation process. A lot of evaluation processes can look similar to the one I'm about to show you. But it's really good to caveat that you know different Different processes are different across every publisher. This is just one example. So let's go into our evaluation process. Uh, I'm going to give a rough uh, explanation of every step, and then I'm going to dive deep into each of these steps uh, in a later stage of this talk. So if I'm going too fast, I'm sorry. I'll uh, be breaking it down in a little bit. So first off, all of our games flow into our intake. This is the place where all of our games show up. And anything that we're ever looking at publishing, anything that ever comes to us through an email, through a Twitter link, through anything is coming in through our intake. All those games go into a process called early evaluation, where we look at the games against our criteria to understand how they fit in with us. Next, it moves into a stage called group evaluation, where our entire publishing team sits down. And we talk about the game and how it fits in with us, and what are the needs and necessities of the team, and how do we meet those. The next stage is called the deep dive. And this is literally diving deep with the developer and addressing any issues that came up, the things we really like, getting to really know the developer and understand both of our needs as a publisher and as a developer. Alongside that, sometimes these processes are parallel. We have a data dive where we're really looking at everything from projections to understanding budgets to really diving deep into anything Excel spreadsheet. Uh, our goal here is to really feel confident in the data that we have and ensuring that we're not missing anything in terms of budget, in terms of resources, in terms of schedule. And then finally, if that all looks strong and we're feeling confident, there's an offer. And if the developer accepts the offer, we sign the game. And th this is it. This is our entire evaluation to signing process. Uh, all of our games that we ever look at will go through the intake. They all flow through the different stages of evaluation. If at any point a game is no longer a fit for us for any reason, we'll let the developer know, hey, you know, this isn't feeling like a good fit. And then we'll stop going through the rest of the evaluation stages because it's no longer needed. But oftentimes, if a developer gets stopped on any of the evaluation stages, and then three to six months later, something changes, sometimes developers can jump right back into the eval, and they can continue onward if they solve the problems or things that we addressed. And then finally, if we get through the signing process, again, it's a publishing relationship, and we are all good to go. So every game that we ever get into our intake goes into our early evaluation, because I think we think it's really fair that every game gets looked at that we ever get sent. And out of that group of 100% of all the games that come in, only 13, 13 to 14% will actually make it into the group evaluation round. From the group evaluation round, we see that turn to about 2.3% of all pitches, followed by half a percent. And that goes all the way down to about 0.15% of all games that we ever look at getting signed to a publishing relationship. And my goal here isn't to scare you and to say, you're not going to get signed by a publisher, but I really want to emphasize here that very few games actually get signed by publishers, that the amount of volume and the amount of games we are looking at is tremendous and overwhelming at times. So just be aware that um, not a lot of games get signed, that you should be you know, putting yourself forward in the best light possible. And I'll talk about that more as we go into the process of really unpacking each of these stages. So that's it. That's our process. And we're going to start with the intake into unpacking a little bit of what the intake is and what happens there. So at the intake stage, uh, we are seeing, again, every single game and pitch and thing that ever gets sent our way. This is where it's all getting processed and documented so that we know that we're going to respond to it and that we are seeing it. Uh, it's a little bit of a hot mess. There's a lot of games in here. There's a lot of things that aren't particularly games in here. Sometimes there's like business propositions and other things that aren't 
really tied to what we do, and sometimes they accidentally show up. Uh, and this is the place where we start to filter things out and start to really line up everything that we're going to be looking at. So how do games get into our intake? Well, a lot of times they're just pitched to me at my email address, or they I get Twitter DMs, I get LinkedIn messages, I and uh, but a vast majority of our games come to our public email account, which is roundtable at armorgames.com. Uh, things also get into intake if we've met you at Indigo, which I've met with quite a few of you today. Uh, we, you know, if we reach out and contact you because we saw something on Twitter we really liked, or if someone we know referred you to us. So there's a lot of ways that games get into this intake. And to break that data down, about 94% of our games come from our email address. Uh, a lot of people email us uh, to that email address looking for like that catch-all email that uh, that you know, they can pitch to. So that's where we see the majority of our games. Uh, another 2% each come from emails and us reaching out. And then we get another few percentages from everywhere else. It's really important to know that 100% of the games we get go through the same evaluation process. There's no jumping the line. There's no, um, you know, you don't get any sort of advantage by going to any specific source because we're going to be judging games against you know, all the same criteria and evaluation processes we have in place. Uh, there is a little bit of benefit to meeting in person or meeting on a video call just because there's that sort of human interaction. But overall, we are, you know, we do need to filter and look at each game that we look at to ensure that it's a good fit for us. And we think it's most fair if all the games go through uh, the same process, regardless if I talk to you in person or regardless if you send us an email or a Twitter DM. So I get this question a lot, and I just wanted to answer it. <laughs> um, what are we getting a lot of right now? So right now, as as pitches, as things that we see a lot, uh, there's a few different themes that we're seeing a lot of. And I'm not saying don't make these games. I'm just saying that you need to make sure your positioning is as unique as it is always. Um, you should always be trying to create unique positioning for your title, but especially against these categories, we're seeing a lot of these games right now. So I would just be really careful um, to make sure everything is positioned uniquely against you know, other games in these genres and styles and types. Um, I'm just gonna name a few of these. You can just read some of them, but um, we're seeing a lot, we're seeing a lot of roguelikes. We're seeing a lot of cyberpunk neon themes and aesthetic, a lot of neon glow, a lot of uh, geometry wars to cloud punk kind of aesthetics. Uh, we are um, we're seeing a lot of games that fall into the wholesome category. We're seeing a lot of post-apocalyptic games. Uh, we're seeing a lot, a lot of very, very basic 2D platformers, but that's not anything different. We've been seeing very, very basic 2D platformers since the beginning of time. So um, these are just a few examples of what we're seeing a lot of. Remember how important unique positioning is. And that leads into what should you send us into the intake? And so the goal is to send us a very comprehensive, a succinct summary of your game and its needs. Uh, comprehensive and succinct don't often fit together, but what we're really looking for is we're not looking for pages and pages and pages and essay of an essay of what your game is. We're looking for information that is really core to your title, that is comprehensive in explaining everything that we could need as a publisher, but distilled down enough that it's legible and easy for us to read and easy for us to process and, and look at. So at the intake stage, the thing that we get the most are a build, if it's available, a screenshot, a GIF, and a trailer, and a presentation deck, which has all the things that don't fit in the email. So things like your team information, information about your game, trailers, screenshots. These are all really good things to send us. Like We really need these things in order to do an evaluation. Um, not all games have a build available. That's OK. Just let us know. But you know. These are the things we expect, and these are like the minimum that we expect as we're starting to evaluate a game. And if we don't have these, we're going to ask for them. A majority of the games that we get miss these critical items. So a really good video, a really good video of gameplay is really good at explaining what the game is without us having to go through the full installation process. And uh, we will go through that installation process, but having a gameplay video where I can instantly pop in and see parts of the game that I might have missed or can go back and do uh, further evaluation on, these are really good things to have. And it really, um, some of the more veteran teams who are pitching always put together a great gameplay video. So gameplay videos are awesome. Uh, your budget and roadmap, I'm surprised uh, constantly how how often I don't get these things. And they're really critical for us understanding your funding needs as well as the timeline for development. So please always send a budget and a roadmap. 
And then we always need information on what you need. We need, a lot of the times we just get a funding number and that's it. We need to understand if you need help with marketing, with trailers, with localization, like what are the things that you expect from us as a publisher? So those are things that we need and we often don't get in our pitches. And then send us pictures of your pets because that actually always wins us points. So uh, early evaluation is where we start to take all the things from intake and we start to process them and understand uh, what is getting pitched to us and whether or not it's a fit for us. So the biz dev team will take a look at every single game that comes in and determines whether it meets our quality standards as well as the criteria we're looking at. Uh, again, this is a really important stage for you as a developer. Uh, this is where your pitch is getting made. If you're not pitching to me in person, this is the place where we're looking at the game for the first time. This is our first presentation, first look at the game. Uh, really make sure you do a good job here and really refine it. This is one of the most critical stages. And again, it's important for you to do this because you need to stand out among all the other titles that are getting pitched to me essentially right now. Um, and again, 86.6% .6 of games are filtered out at this stage. So it's really important that you put together a succinct pitch that really stands out among your peers. Um, we're judging games quickly because we are looking at hundreds to thousands of games. So please, uh, again, do a great pitch. Um, so we'll go into, if a game looks really good in early evaluation, we'll send it into our group evaluation. And our group evaluation is, is time for our greater publishing team to sit down, we'll play the game together, and we'll start to gather feedback. And that feedback is coming from everyone on the team. That's coming from QA, myself and BizDev, as well as our producers and other staff. So we're thinking about everything here. We're thinking about your gameplay, your artwork, your marketing, your positioning, your target audience, your storytelling, your financials, your QA, your porting, your, your scope of the project, and all the other risks and positives that we could possibly ever talk about. Uh, this is a place for us to feel out the game. We, as a group, will sit down and we will see if this is the game that we're starting to fall in love with, something that we really want to support, the development team that resonates with us, we start to get those pieces together and really start to feel out whether or not this game is the right fit for us. And usually at this stage, there's a spark. There's a moment where we realize, wow, this is a really awesome game. We would love to work on this. And if we're starting to feel that from the group and there's that energy, that's generally what will pass a game out of group evaluation. So we need that energy. We need that spark. If we're feeling that, if it feels like it's resonating, we'll get to move on. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why we don't get that spark or why things aren't resonating. The biggest one is execution. So it's just not, something is just not meeting the standard we expect. And this is a hard thing because a lot of games are not done yet. Like a lot of games are coming to us, you know, in pre-production or just past vertical slice. So it's really hard to judge execution because, you know, we don't know what's going to happen to a lot of the facets of the games as the game evolves. So this is a tricky subject for us to judge on. Uh, often we're seeing issues with differentiation, how games stand out, uh, marketing games that you know we know are going to be difficult to market for a variety of reasons, uh, investment, gameplay, games too early, not exciting enough. There's a, a bunch of factors that will always factor into uh, why games fail, but these are generally the top seven ones. It's really important to reiterate here that if you fail any stage of our evaluation process, it doesn't mean failure forever. Generally, titles where we address what our concerns are will come back in 6, 12 months, sometimes even longer, and we'll suddenly have all those issues we had addressed. And now we're going to talk to them about publishing and some of those games we've actually signed. So for a lot of publishers, I wouldn't ever consider things a super closed door until they actually are. So always feel free to repitch. From our group eval, we're loving the game. There's a spark there. We go into our deep dive. And the deep dive is the stage where we unpack every single detail of the title. So we'll go into um, everything that comes out of group feedback. We will start to discuss, you know, what are things missing from the demo or from the pitch or from the developer? What are the things we liked? What are the major concerns? The goal here is to really remove all the mysteries on the table as possible. And we know we can't solve everything, but we're going to solve as many as we can. And this is also a really good time to meet the developer and get to know them more than we already have. Uh, during the deep dive process, we're often on the on the phone with the developer for several hours, getting to know the ins and outs of their studio, of them. They get to meet us, uh, our broader team. And this is the time where we're really looking for 
you know, an energy between us and the developer. And this is also a time where we start to explain every single thing we do as a publisher inside and out and getting to let them know what the day to day of working with us is. Because at the same time as us being a publisher evaluation and us trying to evaluate whether a game is a good fit, game developers should also be evaluating whether their publisher is a good fit. So we're often working together to understand how we fit together. And this is what the deep dive will accomplish. The data dive that runs parallel is all about internal forecasting, understanding what we need in terms of resources, timing, and availability, and really making sure we're not missing things from the budget and from uh, other parts of development. Uh, things we often miss or are finding in the data dive is we're missing budget items such as localization or uh, porting costs that uh, we have a mismatch in our expectations around sales. A developer might think they're going to sell a million units in a week, and we may think that they might sell 10,000 units in a week. And that's a really big discrepancy that we need to get over. Uh, we need to think about things like recruitment time. I don't want a developer to be saddled with recruitment costs. That means they don't see enough money until much later into development. So these are things that we evaluate and make sure we have the right recruitment model to fit their game so that based on our expectations that they would be getting the right sort of revenues coming out of the game at the right time. And we also think about our roadmap. Like, did we miss QA? Did we miss um, you know, going through a certification process? These are the things that we really look for here. If everything looks good there, we go to an offer. Uh, we generate the offer based on um, what the needs of the team are versus what we provide as a publisher. And um, we deliver terms, and then we have a conversation about those terms. We're not hard on those terms. We, we generally want to feel things out and know that we're in a relationship where the developer gets to also you know, decide some of the terms. That's really important. If everything looks perfect there, we go to uh, sign, and then we go through the contract process. I'm not going to dive into contracts here because it's a lot. It could be its own talk. But really, the only thing I'm going to say is consider hiring a lawyer to look over the contract. A lot of developers don't do this, and it can cause pain points. Just get a lawyer. It will help protect you. So overall, this whole process takes about three weeks for us. Uh, sometimes it takes a little longer, especially in the environment we're in around COVID and other things going on. Uh, some evaluations can take over a year, and that's only because sometimes we'll stop the evaluation at something like the deep dive because pieces are missing or it just doesn't feel right, like the right time to enter a publishing relationship. But sometimes we'll come back to the table and we'll finish up that evaluation later, and then suddenly we're working together as a publisher and developer. Long-term uh, publishing is a long-term commitment. It's really important that everyone feels confident and comfortable in working together. So I'm going to end this talk really quickly. I know I only have five minutes left on talking about, you know, the the tips for engaging with publishers, the ones that I don't see uh, developers doing often that I think would really benefit most developers. So the first thing is you should contact multiple publishers. A lot of developers go in thinking, okay, there's this one publisher I really like. And I'm only going to reach out to that one publisher, and I hope they like the game. I just want to remind you that very few games get signed by publishers, and you need to find the one that fits and resonates with you. And you should be reaching out to more publishers than you think you need to. And I know that's maybe saddling a lot of publishers with a lot of extra evaluations, but honestly, we should be finding you the right fit that's right for you. So make sure you're reaching out to multiple publishers. Make sure that you are putting together the best presentation you can. Um, ask for feedback. That's a really big thing that you can do, and I don't see a lot of developers do that. Ask a lot of questions during the evaluation. So uh, a lot of developers don't ask questions. A lot of the time, that's just because it's hard to come up with really good questions on the on the spot. But you should really be asking us more questions about what we do and how we do it, because how we do things is really important. Uh, ask questions like, what's the day-to-day -day like working with us? What's your evaluation process? Uh, what do you do with games after they launch? Uh, what what is marketing to you? Those are really important things that publishers would need to be put on the spot and ask questions about. Be realistic about your funding needs. You know, ask for the right amount of money plus a little bit of buffer, just because things always it's games. Everything runs over. So be honest. Like, don't try to ask for very little money from us, thinking that that makes an offer more attractive. Because we're thinking about the overall budget and we're thinking about your runway and your ability to make the game. So be honest in your approach and be realistic. And then everything you send us should be easy to share. That's like one of the biggest things is if you send things to us that are in impossible permission-based formats that I can only look at in my 
and you know members of my team can't look at, that makes it really hard for us to evaluate the title. So send us PDFs. Those are awesome. Send us PowerPoint files. Send us things on Google Drive. Um, get a Dropbox link that's public so that we can see it. I know, um, I know a lot of developers use WeTransfer, but WeTransfer links expire. So suddenly someone can't see it because they didn't, weren't able to evaluate it in the five or seven days WeTransfer often puts on files. So um, just be mindful that everything that you are sending us, you know, we should get excited about and share in our internal Slack and get really excited about. But that only happens if the files you send us are portable. Um, and you know, making portable documents is also really good for engaging with multiple publishers. Uh, I think this is my last tip. Yeah. So be patient, but not passive. So publishers are again are looking at thousands of games. So you should be a little bit patient in being able to wait, you know, a week or two at least to get a response back from a publisher. If you're not getting a response back in the time that you need, it's okay to follow up. It's okay to resurface. Um, it doesn't hurt to ask where things are at. Just be polite. Um, and just know that ghosting happens. It's a real thing. Um, you know, sometimes you email a publisher and they'll never email you back, and that hurts and it sucks, but um, that's the reality of publishers talking or getting thousands of emails is like some things will fall through the cracks. And it's um, we we try to respond to everything, but you know, we often are are at fault for this too. So takeaways here, learn how publishers evaluate. It makes your pitching better. It makes it makes our lives as publishers looking at your games a lot easier and it flows through our evaluation process so much easier if you learn generally how publishers evaluate games. Pitch strong from the start. Always, you know, be pitching really strong out of the gate. Don't string things along with, I'm gonna send you a pitch in a week. Really, you need everything concise in one email or in one presentation and start strong and things tend to end strong if they are. Find your positioning and differentiation. Figure out how you stand out in the pack. Think about how you stand out among your among all the other indie titles and games that come out every single year. This is as important as it is at the pitching stage as it is towards the end of your development. And then finally, ask for feedback. Well, penultimately, ask for feedback, repitch. Publishers will give you feedback if you ask for it, uh, or at least most of them will. And then finally, align on passion and dive deep together. You should work really closely with your publisher to feel that passion, to feel that energy. You should be as comfortable with this publishing relationship as they are. It's a partnership. It's not a one-way partnership. So please uh, feel comfortable. Uh, that is it. I know I ran up exactly on 30 minutes. Uh, so thank you so much for coming to my talk. Uh, if you have any questions, you can email me at john at armorgames.com, or you can tweet at me or, or do whatever you like. Um, I'm I'm also happy to take uh, questions elsewhere uh, while Indigo is still going on. So really appreciate you coming to my talk. John, thank you so much. Uh, you were exactly on time. I'm still going to uh, try and get one question in quickly because cool. um, that just came in from the audience. Um, mm -hmm. Do you rather see budgets for only development uh, slash license costs or also uh, QA marketing included in that? Yeah, I'm... As far as me as a publisher, you know, generally we're a full service publisher, so we are providing QA and localization and other costs. It, I actually really like seeing those costs line itemed by a developer because it helps me understand where their head is at in terms of what their expectations are for QA and localization. If I'm seeing a localization budget that's, you know, six figures, mm -hmm. I'm starting to wonder uh, what what the aspirations and goals are for localization. A uh, new car. So, yeah. <laughs> so generally, so generally, I like to see um, I like to see those items, but they're not required. I know um, if you're pitching to an investor who isn't adding all those publishing services, they're going to want to see the budget for it. Right. So it's important to pitch to uh, you know who you're who's going to be providing you what. Right, and I, one more actually, uh, sure. something I just thought of, maybe a difficult one, but when you do that deep uh, deep dive and and try to find a good fit, uh, what would you say uh, is, is Armor Games' best? best uh, um, thing that they put into the equation? What, what do you pride yourself on? What do we pride ourselves on? Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, sure. Uh, so Armor Games is very much a vision first publisher. We love developers who carry a lot of vision, have a lot. We have a lot of respect for independent vision and what that means. So what we're looking for in terms of the deep dive is, you know, there's an emotional aspect to it. There is 
a when we're looking for a developer, we want them to be emotionally invested, and we want to find ourselves emotionally invested too, not just in right. the development of the game, but also in supporting that developer and that team, and that we believe in them, and that we believe that this developer should be making games, and that we should be doing all we can to support them into making that game. And that is something that is hard to quantify with percentages and with numbers and. Mm -hmm. Um, but it is something that is really meaningful to us. We want to be, you know, we want to be passionate about a game, and awesome. I, I think that's all, I think that's why we all got into games in the first place. That's a great answer. Thank you so much. Uh, this is all the time we have uh, for you today. So thank you so much for that talk. Yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity.